tan 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 Okay, welcome to Oppie News, everyone. Hey um, we are back again. This is episode two of Oppie News. Let us know if you're liking the Oppie News thing. Um, you, well, I suppose you'll know after today's episode, because last, last week's episode was more focused on Amazon. This week, we've got some interesting topics coming up for you. We have Amazon car delivery using uh, Amazon car keys. I've got a note here. What the <laughs> fuck? I mean, what the hell's going on? Amazon is going to... We'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but that's cool. Walmart has bought Fit Flipkart, um, meaning that they're basically trying to challenge amazon in india we'll go into that one and in- instagram is finally going to be um accepting e-commerce payments so it's going to be a, a really interesting topic to discuss there fairly briefly but let's india. begin from the top amazon is going to be delivering in your car what the hell is going on i mean they are i've got to be i've got to give it to them they are innovating with um with delivery uh like crazy I actually kind of made a prediction about probably about a year and a half ago that Amazon will one day end up being a logistics service almost just as much as they are an e-commerce store because um, they're changing the way that we we do logistics right you couldn't you couldn't receive packages in one day um or within like three hours uh, just a few years ago and they're changing things massively they've been testing stuff with the, with the drones and just all sorts of things they've got um, shut <laughs> yeah yeah that didn't go very well but now here is the latest one so just last year I think it was Amazon released their new key service which basically allows uh, you to have a a key is it a key card or an app uh, I'm not sure you put this think- lock on your door uses an app right so you have this on your door and it can unlock your door it's all kind of part of the um the alexa and the home the smart home type service that we're going to have uh, or that we're kind of moving towards in the world and obviously amazon's trying to be a big part of that and we discussed that in more detail on last week's oppie news so you can go and find out about m- more stuff on what they're planning on, to, on doing with because they just bought this home security company right i can't think what it's called um so they're trying to build yep. that out so they've introduced this um lock so they've got a lock system so that you can unlock your door with your smartphone and stuff uh and what that has been allowing delivery drivers to do is to unlock your door as well right sounds terrifying but there are cameras in place and all the rest of it so that um it's completely monitored so if someone was to break into your house or a delivery guy was to break into your house and go and steal stuff it would all be on camera and you'd just be a massive idiot so it's fairly secure we're going to have some security issues with this stuff of course but it seems fairly secure at the moment Exactly, exactly. So they have implemented that last year. It's now a, a service, and I'm not sure. It's only available in a few states in the US. Uh, and so now they've just released the new Amazon car delivery service, which is essentially utilizing the same te- same technology. So you'll have um, uh, an application that can unlock your car. And they, well, they partnered with General Motors and Volvo for this uh, ser- new service. Yes, exactly. And this is all part of trying to become, trying to push Alexa into uh, cars as well. So you have like the same way that you can control your lights and stuff at home. You can have Alexa to talk to and help you control your car in different ways. Um, so basically, Amazon is trying to get into everything, the Internet of Things, right? Um, and so they're going to be allow. So now. What's going to be happening with this is that, (laughs) this is crazy, delivery drivers can, on their phone, they can track your car on GPS. And it's not like they're just going to track you wherever they are. It's to to deliver a package at a certain time, right? They're going to see where your car is. So let's say your car's parked at the office and they'll go and find your car. They'll follow the GPS to find your car in the car park and they can go, they can unlock your car. They're then going to leave your package in the boot of your car, in the trunk for you Americans out there, and and then lock your car and go. <laughs> so whether your car's at home really or weird. in the office or whatever, <laughs> they're going to deliver it to your car. It's fucking crazy. I mean, I don't really understand how where we're going in this world. But I don't know. You've got to give it to them for trying new stuff. I mean, that's innovation right there. It's pretty impressive. Um, 
it is. And now uh, people won't get their uh, packages stolen anymore. I remember one guy that uh, added, um, mounted a, um, a video uh, camera on his porch and uh, waited for the delivery man to um, deliver the package. Yeah, and he was not yeah. home, so he got that package delivered. But and in about I don't know six hours, at least four or five people tried to steal that package. So this is yeah. a serious problem, and Amazon is trying to fix it. Yeah, so credit where credit's due. They're doing a pretty interesting or a good job of trying new and interesting things, which we wouldn't expect anything less from Amazon. So yeah, cool stuff. So if you're in one of these states, I don't know, you'll have to go and check it out. Go and look it up online now and see if you're in one of the states and give it a try. Let us know if you can try this service and, uh, and, and leave us a comment. Let us know how it works. We're not in the states at the moment. I'm in Mexico. Christian's in Romania. Um, really want to know what it's like for someone to actually use this. One small mention. You got to be an Amazon Prime subscriber for the moment. Uh, of course. You got to be Amazon Prime <laughs> if you want anything good from Amazon. Um, yeah. Clever guys. Good stuff. Indeed. Though. Indeed. Next, we've got Walmart buying Flipkart. Now, this is in the same realm because just last week in Oppie News, we were talking about how Amazon is really making some good progress in India. They are, I can't think what the numbers are, but they're doing really well. They get, they're, they're opening fulfillment centers all over the place and they're getting really good growth. Yep. Uh, I think it, it, it grew three times since. Uh, right. Since last last year, wasn't it? When we were talking about it back in April or something last year. Yeah. When we thought it would fail. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. So India's become a massive market for Amazon. Um, but there was always this existing e-commerce giant called Flipkart in India. And you can go to it now. I think it's just flipkart.com. It's flip, uh, K with a, a, Flipkart with a K. Uh, I'll put it in the show notes. And you can go there and you, it's just basically like Amazon. It's kind of like Amazon. Um, it's kind of more like Jet if you're in the US. That's, um, I think, kind of a bit of an Amazon competitor. So it's, it's a bit more of that kind of style. And Walmart has basically bought Flipkart out, uh, which really suggests that they are trying to stop Amazon from growing in, in India. I mean, it doesn't suggest it, it proves they are trying to stop. They're trying to compete with Amazon in India. I guess they, they really see it as a big opportunity over there. And what's really interesting about this is that they, while they could have quite easily bought out the entire company, they only bought, I think it's 77% of the company. So what that is suggesting is that they are leaving, uh, they are leaving 23% open for other people to come in. They basically want to get allies. They want to get other companies to come on board to help defeat Amazon in India. So it's going to be war. I think it's already war. (laughs) (laughs) It's war. Yeah, really. uh, These two giants uh, hold around 30% of the market. And it seems um, consumers trust Flipkart more, but they're searching for Amazon more often. So I think it's, um, um, uh, the reason why is because Amazon offers a better user and shopping experience. Yeah. Yeah. That they do have, but people know Flipkart. So the question, the big question is going to be, have Walmart come in early enough to be able to challenge, to to be able to stop Amazon from taking over in India at the moment? They really could have done. We, I don't know. But at the moment, it seems like Amazon's pretty unstoppable. So it, are they going to stop Amazon or are they just going to have wasted a lot of money? What was the per- – have you got the purchase um, uh, value, the value, the amount of – what was it called? The, the, what's it called? The, pe- the purchase price. Purchase price. Um, I don't know. It was a lot of money. Um, and- 16 billion. So Worldmart uh- – Jesus. 16 um, billion. So Walmart paid 16 billion. Wow. Okay. So it's a big amount of money. Could it be a complete waste? At this rate, it really could be. I mean, Amazon is absolutely destroying at the moment. We've seen amazing growth in Q1. Uh, there's, there's no stopping them right now. So the big question is, are Walmart going to stop Amazon in, in India? Personally, I don't want them to. I, I mean, I'm a massive fan of Amazon and I think Amazon is, is doing a lot of good in the world. It's really, uh, making some good changes and I think it can potentially really help India, help, help the economy. Um, they simplify but- things a lot. That's, that's the, and people trust this the giant 
just because it offers the right services and um, clients um, have the security of getting their money back and getting their products shipped and yeah, they have and a, it, um, a giant to complain to if things don't go well. It pushes us forward as as a human race, I think. And uh, yeah, I'm, I think it could be really beneficial for uh, Amazon to, to be successful in India. But we will not be the deciders of that. It will be down to Walmart to decide whether they're going to be able to do enough to stop them at this rate. So it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds over the next year. I'd be interested to see where Amazon is in India in Q1 uh, next year, 2019. Um, so that's interesting. And then we've got a final topic of conversation here today in this episode of Oppy News, and that is that Instagram is going to start accepting e-commerce payments. Now, this is, um, this is quite a, an interesting, uh, concept really, because Instagram started years ago as a, it was supposed to be this really fluid process, right? They, they didn't allow people to have links in they, they don't allow you to have links in comments on Instagram uh, photos um because they didn't want people moving away from the the stream experience right they wanted it to be live they didn't want you to publish things that weren't in the moment they wanted it to be a very sponta- spontaneous platform where people publish things in the moment not where people are publishing things to market their brand and things like that and so they've always had to walk a very fine line since the facebook acquisition of how to monetize instagram and how to yeah essentially make more money from it without making it become uh without without making it lose that fluidity and one of the things they obviously did we all know was introducing ads into Instagram and the ads became a bit of a pain in the ass I've got to be honest and if for the first time if you clicked on these ads you could go to other you could open other websites right you'd, you'd take you through to the landing page of that ad which essentially really broke up the flow of Instagram because that was the entire purpose of it you weren't supposed to be able to leave it you were just supposed to be in this stream and going through the stream of photos of all your friends and family well the ads kind of ruined that so now we've got Instagram payments straight within the application. So that means that we can now, as marketers or e-commerce guys, we can create ads and accept. So we can create an ad for a product of ours, uh, put a product image and have a buy now button on uh, Instagram. And when you click that buy now button, we're going to be able to accept payments directly with within Instagram right in the moment. I'm not sure how this is going to look or how it's going to work. Um, I think they've already uh, started started a test with uh, appointment booking and uh, for restaurants, I think. Right. Okay. Okay. So it's uh, already rolled out. Um, I think they want to do it for um, buying tickets as well. I'm not sure about shopping on Instagram for products. I've, I've never, I've never read about it. And so I don't know much, but I think they'll, they'll implement it with success. Yeah, I, th- I think so as well. Um, we've seen as well, they've been trying, so Facebook has been trying to implement, um, in app purchases for messenger. So you can make purchases directly within messenger. And, uh, and I'm not really sure how that's going. I tested it with an ad a few months ago and it wasn't really the best service. Uh, it just, uh, it had a lot of issues. So this kind of general mobile payments or in-app payments or even chat app payments is going to be a very difficult thing to, uh, to evolve. But Obviously, we've got some big companies working in it at the moment, mainly Facebook, I think. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how that rolls out. This is obviously, we should expect to see a big, uh, a fair bit of growth in Instagram revenue for, as a result of this because we're going to have people, hopefully we're going to have better conversion rates from Instagram now. Instagram's never been really the best at uh, converting. Um, yeah, I've heard stories of people making good money from from Instagram ads, but personally, I've always struggled to generate good uh ROI on on Instagram ads and hopefully now we're going to see an increased conversion rate and that is going to cause people to start spending more money on Instagram ads which is going to generate more revenue for Instagram and ultimately Facebook so it should be interesting to see what their uh, their coming reports are for revenue after rolling this this kind of feature out um, I guess um, um, people in fashion um, 
found Instagram a, a good uh, source of uh, revenue or, yeah. or advertising. Because, yeah. um, you know, it's a visual, it, it's more visual. You can, um, you have a lot of people that love images. You know, they love images and uh, a, a, a product placement yeah. would be easy. Yeah, exactly. Lifestyle brands, I call them. Lifestyle yeah. brands, brands where it, it gets into the lives of people and becomes part of their lifestyle. So, yeah, it should be really interesting. So we should see how that rolls out. And it's going to be great for us as uh, people running our e-commerce stores or marketing, uh, whether it be for your own store or for clients of yours. Um, it's going to be a new opportunity, a new channel to hopefully start generating more revenue or more return on investment and that's one thing we can always give credit to facebook for and that is new and innovative ways to advertise i think they 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 beat uh google in this sense that they are constantly releasing new types of ads new ways for you to present your ads to people you've got i uh, just just in the last 12 months there have been so many new releases with their a b test feature within within uh within facebook with their um you've got like an offer option you can do now so you can provide offers you can sell you can give offers to people discount codes and things um directly within facebook you've got lead forms so people can sign up with their email address um directly within facebook and now we've got the new release of uh instagram payments so that should be interesting all of this should be interesting also to see how it all relates to uh, the big GDPR release coming up on the 25th of May. Uh, we are on the 11th of May right now. And, uh, and there's very little time before the GDPR release. We wanted to actually re- mention it in, uh, today's, uh, OPI news. However, it's such a big topic that we want to take some time to go through it. Um, next in, in two weeks time, we're going to release a main podcast. Uh, so it should be coming out on, uh, what date will that be, Christian? The, it'll come out on the 22nd, right? This is going to be three days before the GDPR implementation. Uh, GDPR, what's it stand for, Christian? General Data General Protection, Protection Regulations. Regulation, or something that's like that. Exactly that. Right. And for anyone who doesn't know, there are going to be big changes in the way that you can collect people's data nowadays. And if you're running a website, you are collecting data. So don't be fooled. Uh, if you're collecting email addresses, if you are dropping cookies on people's browsers, uh, if you are using Facebook pixels and all that kind of stuff, then you are collecting data. So this is something you're going to have to be aware of because the fines are going to be massive. So even tune- if you're not in Europe, even if you're not in if Europe, you're making, guys, if you if, if you have a business and uh, have yeah, uh, European customers, you got to oblige the law. Exactly. Law. So we will, um, we'll go into that in more detail in a couple of weeks. So look out for that episode. It's going to be really helpful. We're going to basically discuss exactly what it is, define it, uh, so you can have a very clear understanding of it, and then really talk about how it's going to affect us within e-commerce and how we should begin to manage the data. Uh, and, and bear in mind, this isn't about new data, new data that you're collecting, new email addresses that you're collecting. It's about existing stuff that you've got as well. If you've got an email list, if you've got customers, you know, which I hope you do, then this is going to affect that those customers and that data and believe you me the penalties are massive for this so it's important to get it right and understand what's going on that's everything for now anything more you want to add christian no that's it the fines can go up to 20 millions uh or four percent of your global annual revenue so (laughs) you guys watch out yeah, watch out. Tune in in a couple of weeks. You'll look out for a podcast on that. It'll be episode, well, I don't know, episode 13, 14, something like that. Look out for it. Uh, May 22nd, that'll be out. So that's all for now. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Oppie News. As always, I've been your host, Charlie Center. And I've been Christian Opera. And we'll catch you next time. Dun, 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 <laughs> Whatever the fuck that was. <laughs>